You know, just when I think I've seen every amazing room here at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History, I find another one. No one told me about this room. <laughs> What's this room called? We're hiding from you. It's called the Vertebrate Compactor Room. The Vertebrate Compactor Room. What it basically is, is just shelves and shelves of dinosaur bones. But we want to talk to you about what I think is the most amazing and perhaps the most important bone in dinosaur history. And you have it. Yeah. But it's upstairs. We'll get to that in a minute. Because first of all, we want to talk to you about these bones. These are from a Megalosaurus. What's a Megalosaurus? So the name means great lizard. Megalosaurus was a large theropod, a meat-eating dinosaur, that lived in the middle of Jurassic and roamed around Oxfordshire. The hips were probably around, you know, this high. It was a pretty substantial animal, weighed well, over a ton. It could eat me. Yeah. And the reason the Megalosaurus is kind of a big deal is it was like the first identified dinosaur. It was the first time these bones and fossils had been found and scientists realised, hang on, this is a new thing. Yep. The word dinosaur was, hasn't been invented yet, but this was the first time that a dinosaur was scientifically described and recognised to be a giant extinct reptile. Can I look at some of these bones? Can I get this yeah, one? Yeah, you can, yeah. Oh, let me get it really carefully. Where would this be from, do so we this know? is part of the pelvic girdle. It's called an ischium. Now this gives you some idea as to how big this dinosaur was. Let me put that one back very carefully. Oh, <laughs> what is this? That is a femur. That's like, this is the thigh. Yeah, so this is the thigh bone. That is a hefty, hefty bone. Okay. You know you're in a cool place when there's a draw marked megalosaur teeth. I don't have one of those at home. All right. So these are the gnashes. Pretty substantial. Yeah, it's a pretty big one. This is a really nice one because it shows the, the serrations along the edge really oh, clearly. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty sharp. You feel how sharp that is. Yeah. Even now, yeah. 167 million years later. It's amazing. How much would you love to be able to go in a time machine and go back and see a real dinosaur? I would love to go back in time to see a real dinosaur. Oh, a lot. It'd be amazing. Yeah. To look at Oxfordshire in the middle of Jurassic could be really interesting. Yeah. Pterosaurs and dinosaurs. Massive, great big plant-eating dinosaurs and little tiny mammals running around. This is a bone from the tail. So in total, the whole animal is about um, around eight or nine metres long, perhaps. So it's quite long. So you've got all these Megalosaurus bones here, and I could spend all day looking at them. But the one we really want to see, and the one we promised you, is upstairs. Let's go and see that one. So we've shown you all those Megalosaurus bones and teeth downstairs, but here's the one that's really exciting. This is the bone of bones, the crown jewel of dinosaur bones. This is a jaw and teeth yep. from another megalosaurus. Yeah, this is the part of the dentary, the jaw bone. Why is this one a big deal though? Why is this one important? Partly because it just looks really cool. But secondly, it's because it's the type specimen of megalosaurus bucklandii. And the type specimen is the specimen that that species named is defined on. So any time a new animal is discovered, the first one, the one that they can properly identify, gets this special status. And this is the number one kind, first identified specimen of the Megalosaurus, yeah. which is the first dinosaur. Yeah. So this is like the first dinosaur bone. Yeah, it's the first dinosaur ever scientifically named and described. Where did this particular one come from? So this was found in a small village uh, about 10 miles from Oxford called Stonesfield, which is quite aptly named because it was a uh, famous site where they used to quarry limestone for roofing tiles and other building materials. Have a look at this for something extra they kept. I'm really impressed that you've got this. Here, in these two boxes, are the original bits of stone <laughs> that the fossil was found in. Yeah. We can see there where the tooth was. Yeah, so this had broken apart the slate. Often they left them over winter so that the frost helped them break them apart and make them into roofing tiles. And so they must have broken it apart and then revealed this amazing jaw inside. So there's still a very thin layer of bone from the jaw still attached to the yeah. rock. Yeah. What we're hoping to do is to CT scan these and then virtually reconstruct the jaw to show what it would have looked like. And what's this picture here? This is a beautiful illustration of the jaw done by Mary Morland, who later became William Buckland's wife. But they met and fell in love over a, a mutual love of geology. Well, who can blame them? And just finally, is this like a popular thing? Like, where is this normally kept? Do people like to see it? Is this like a bit of a holy grail? Yeah, it's a pretty iconic specimen and this is usually on display. It's going to go back in the case soon. Yeah. So if you come to the Oxford University Museum of Natural History, which I'm getting better and better at saying, <laughs> it's a mouthful. you will get to see this. It's amazing.
This episode was brought to you by 23andMe, the online genetics service that can help you learn what the 23 pairs of chromosomes that make up your DNA can teach you about your ancestry, traits, and health. If you'd like to help with scientific research and discoveries, or just learn your own personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity.